Hey everybody. Here we're looking at two little USB power supplies. These are what came with um, Magic Jack Plus devices. These are the factory ones that would come with the Magic Jack Plus and I believe are still being used as of this day with the current Magic Jack Goes. These are 1 amp USB power supplies and if we take a close look we can see the specifications. So yeah, output 5 volts, 1 amp. Here's the other one. Matter of fact, do them side by side, why not? Yeah, they're pretty much the same thing. Um, the thing about these power supplies is they seem to have an issue with um, failing after a few years. Sometimes they continue to work, but they may cause problems with your Magic Plus or Magic Go. Um, essentially, one problem you may experience is your phone. When you like, when you get a phone call, your phone may fail to ring, and it may reset your device. Your device may restart. Um, sometimes, if you pick up the phone and try to make a phone call, it'll struggle to stay off the hook. And this all sorts of random things can happen. Anything that is more that um, causes your Magic device to need more power from its um, power supply, you may experience weird issues when these decide to give up. Now, sometimes they just give up outright and quit working altogether. Um, so, one thing I've been curious of is what is it? Is it what exactly is inside? these power supplies. Well, we're about to find out. Okay, so now you look at my vise. Um, I think I'm going to do the same method I did last time when I cracked into that um, El Cheapo uh, cell phone adapter, a cell phone charger. And of course, it didn't take much job to crack into that thing, so um, yeah. We'll see what we get here. So we'll see how much easier or harder it is to crack into one of these. Now, I think these are built of these are of better quality than those little cheap um, Chinese phone um, <laughs> power supplies. But um, yeah, of course, this is also made in China, but at least it has a UL certification on it. We may look up that UL number to see if we can find out who made the thing. Put it in like this and hope for the best. Pull these little things off. I think that worked better last time. Try to do it without actually damaging the internal guts of this thing. And that thing is actually pretty dang tough. I mean, it is putting up a fight. <laughs>
thing is actually built like a tank. It's literally crushing the USB adapter. Okay, we'll need some help from the screwdriver. So yeah, that 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 comes to show that even the casing of quality units is um well somewhat I guess quality units. It's definitely better than those cheap things you get off um <laughs> you get off eBay or wherever. I can't call this in quality considering it's already failed. It's definitely wanting to fight us. It's definitely wanting to fight us getting into us for sure. Okay, that's the USB thing. There we are. So it won to put up a fight, but ultimately we still won the battle. And we are inside. <laughs> One thing's for certain um, is it's definitely built better than that real cheap end piece of crap that uh, we just looked at. Uh, that uh, cell phone adapter from. Let's see. Oh yeah, this is, this is definitely a good example to compare with. So, let's go grab the other power supply and get a nice comparison. Okay, first we're going to take a close look at our power supply. The good quality power supply. It's definitely built with much more modern components. Um, we have a lot of SMD components in there. <laughs> These capacitors, <laughs> I don't recognize the brand, so we can't we can't say this is an absolute top-notch power supply. I tell you that. Um, the solder in here looks a bit mess messy, in my opinion, especially near the um, the front where the um, AC comes in. And you can see the um, UL number right there on the power supply, PCB. And, um, so we have a bridge rectifier right there. We have lots of surface mount components, including an integrated circuit IC. That IC looks like it might be burnt. If you have a close look. Yeah, that looks a little iffy now one of these I think may I think one of these actually got hit, uh, run in by lightning um, so there's no telling what the exact cause of failure was You know, the thing doesn't work anymore, but it's still, when you compare it to the piece of crap I'm about to show you, uh, it's just a night and day difference in quality. Matter of fact, I think this, yeah, this plug here actually slides off. 
So that's probably how it was originally intended to be opened up. Um, I'll know that next time. <laughs> I'll just rip the plug out the front and slide the whole thing out. But, um, here's a look at it straight on from where the um, receptacle used to be. We have two 4.7 microfarad 400 volt primary caps. We have a freaking fuse. It's right there. I think it's a fuse. It's heat shrinked. Um, so if I find any markings on the board, that'll help me out tremendously. Yep, F1, so that's definitely a fuse. Ready for 1 amp and 250 volts, which is plenty for this little guy. We have the proper um, Y1 class coupling capacitor. It's that blue capacitor you're looking at right there. And also, you can see that we have physical separation between primary and secondary on this thing, which is very nice. Yeah, we have you know, lots of separation, which is a very good thing. So that's more that's more distance between you and your main voltage. Let's take a look at the secondary. We have let's see a ten volt. Looks to be a 220 microfarad capacitor over here. I think that we have the same on the other side as well. I can find them. I can find a rating. That'd be nice. Yep, same exact thing. There's our um, switching transistor right there. So what's nice about this is um, you have some digital logic in there that should offer some safeguards to make sure that the voltage, the output voltage is in check and also um, you know, for, for your short circuit overload and protections like that obviously. Now let's go and compare that with this piece of crap. Much, much bigger PCB too. It's amazing. Look at look at how much bigger this is versus that. Um, with the exception of some SMD resistors on the bottom, this thing uses through hole. And see for example, this over here is primary, this over here is secondary. It does offer a decent amount of, of gap between primary and secondary so I mean we can't complain too much there but there um, there are definitely power supplies of this variety out there that don't even offer proper spacing between primary and secondary and instead of having the proper class Y1 capacitor for, as a coupling capacitor we have this 1 kV capacitor I'm not sure if that's a 220 picofarad or or what this is. I did look that up because I'm not too familiar with the numbering on these things. I do I know, for example, on the SMD resistors. Um, for example, the the 331 that tells you that one tells you there's a one zero after the 33, so I think to be 330 ohm. Yeah, um, I tell you this right here is just, just utter garbage. Um, no fuse. I'm surprised they even have a full wave rectifier here, which is just comprised of four diodes. The only sort of inverse current limiting is this resistor right here, which I think is one ohm, because it's brown, black, gold. So. 
I'm, I must say that even though these do have a tendency to fail, it's definitely much better than the junk you get for free with, an, say, a phone off of eBay or what well, you could go on eBay and buy for $2 or whatnot. Um, yeah. You know, when these went dead, I, um, I spent around $10 on the adapter that replaced it, so hopefully I'll be getting something that's of decent quality. Now this is, uh, um, again, this is ready for, to, to supply one amp at USB voltage, 5 volts. Whereas this is also a 5 volt adapter, but um, it probably wouldn't be able to easily supply half that. Um, that's another thing with these cheap in pieces of junk is they're not really designed to supply much current. So, let's go and crack open the other power supply and have a look at it. Okay, just like last time we'll pop it on the vise, but um, this time we know that we can just rip out the AC receptor going gain pretty easy access. We'll try doing it that way this time. Yeah, I gotta find the famous new those pliers. I've been missing them. <laughs> so I've been using these little bitty ones here. Um, and I got these dikes as well. So we'll just pop this in here like like this. Already heard some cracking there, so <laughs> definitely applying some pressure. The funny thing is about this um, vice, well not the vice, but it's a, it's a adapter, it's a, the outer plastic shell is very, very slippery, so it's hard to get a good grip on it. So let me put these rubber pieces back on here and see if we get any improvement. I'm assuming this one's probably identical to the other one. Now, as mentioned earlier, I think one of these got ran in by lightning, um, which is what killed it, but um don't know for sure. Yeah, that IC on the other one may be a clue. There we are. Rip the AC receptacle right out. But we, we're still going to have to crack into this thing a little harder, I think. Um, like we did last time with the, with the vise. So, only business as usual, I guess. Let's just try not to damage the internals of this thing. It's pretty much these things are like they're, like they're just welded together. <clears throat> Again, try not to damage the internal parts of this thing.
Yeah, quite literally, the um, the actual power supply PCB just lays inside there, inside the groove, essentially. There we are. Okay. Look at those port right up and now. There we are. So yeah, it's identical. Identical to the other one. Well, actually, not exactly. Um, I think the capacitors on this one are a different brand. Oh, um, yeah. But, I think the overall design is exactly the same. Let's make sure these primaries are discharged. Which they should be in something like this. Generally decent quality supplies and even most cheap end units have bleeder resistors for the primary caps. So that's a look at this one. Again the caps on this one. Um, let me grab the other one just for a comparison. Yeah, we'll compare them side by side. Why not? Yep, they're definitely different capacitors. Look at the vents on the top. Our first sample had a um, had a plus sign vent, and um, these have a three-way vent, like a delt, like a um, like a Y. But other than that, they're basically identical. Let's have a look at the bottom of this one. As I mentioned, one of these still worked. And I think it was probably this one here. It's interesting the number of um, SMD areas that never got used. Like for example, R17, R15. So if I look at these two side by side, you may notice how the integrated circuit on this one looks like it's looks like it's burnt looks like it's shorted whereas and also R6 don't look so well either and speaking of the um it looks like the printing on the PCBs is a little different. See, if you look how um, R6 on this one is noted right on the rightmost one, the R6 is noted right next to the gap, whereas on the other one, R6 is to the left of the resistor. And that looks to be a 100 ohm resistor. This one over here looks burnt. And that, um, I see there don't look so hot <laughs> yeah it looks like something definitely definitely broke down I think I, I can't say for certain if it's actually burnt um, 
I might even try it. Oming, oming it out and see what it shows. See if we get a reading. Or what kind of reading we get. We're getting... Yeah, right exactly 100 ohms. So it's... It's still functional. It could just be the um, it could be like some flux or some other sort of gunk on here that makes it look like it's burnt when it's actually not. But that I see though. It still looks so well. Okay. So these are uh, I'd say of decent quality. This one here. Is a piece of junk. <laughs> now let's go and take the opportunity to see if we can look up the OEM of these units, since we have a UO number to reference to. That is the E24. I can't tell if that's six or an eight. It looks like an E248237. Even yeah, even the the UL numbers and stuff are noted in different spots. So, yep, two four eight two three seven. Let's see if I can find any um, information with that. Okay, so the UL number apparently references to the PCB because I noticed on the plug we have a totally different UL number. Camera's having a little tough time getting focused on that. Give it a second here. Give it some light. There we go. Because that is very small print. E350365. So it's a brand I've never heard of before. <laughs> Power System International Limited. Oh wow. <laughs> so totally unknown company, but at least they do make power supplies that are somewhat decent. So it's safe to say that if you go buy a Magic Jack Go, which I recommend you do, uh, Magic Jack phone service is pretty amazing. I've had it for nearly eight years. Um, if you go out and buy one of these devices, I'd say you can pretty much be rest assured that um, you're getting a somewhat decent power supply, but um, don't expect it to last forever. Because they do end up failing after a while. Now to, to wrap up this video, um, I'm looking at the bottom covers from each of these power supplies. And as you had seen, one of the power slides look like it had some, like the um, AC had got burnt up on it. Well, have a look at that. See if our camera can focus in on that. You may notice how. There's a discolored spot on the plastic there, so yeah, it looks like something definitely burnt up in there. Um, I think this is the one I got hit by lightning, most likely. Anyways, now let's look into Magic Jack Plus power supplies and comparing them with a utter piece of garbage. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, I sure hope you guys enjoyed this video from Q Computer Channel. Remember to like the video, subscribe to Q Computer Channel for more updates, and remember to tick the bell so that we actually get notified of these updates. 
Did you know that I am also on a second channel that's CubeComp MTDX? Over there you'll find videos of bicycling, weather, elevators, and all sorts of other neat and interesting stuff. Feel free to subscribe to that channel as well. And again, I thank you for your support and thanks for watching this video.